Hey everybody, so this will be a short demo. Um, in this short demo, I'll be showing you how to disable or deactivate a MFA device for an AWS IAM user using a single command line. But before we do this, you should know that disabling or deactivating multi-factor authentication decreases the security of an AWS account. So you should never do it unless you have a compelling reason like troubleshooting, or replacing a malfunctioning MFA device. Okay, so let's get to it. So in this demo, I have an AWS account and I have a demo user called Jarvis. So Jarvis has a MFA device enabled, which is good. Okay, so if I use Jarvis's account to log in, it basically asks uh, me for the uh, MFA code. So how do we bypass this? Okay, uh, how do we deactivate Jarvis's um, MFA device? So firstly, we need to take a look at um, how many MFA devices that are associated with Jarvis. So AWS IAM list MFA devices. Username Jarvis. So this will give us a view of how many MFA devices that are associated with Jarvis. Apparently, Jarvis has one. Okay, so and now we're gonna have to um, execute another command that will deactivate the MFA device for Jarvis. And the second command line that you need to execute is AWS. I am deactivate MFA device is a name Jarvis and serial number. So serial number is basically the ARN of the MFA device. So copy and paste it and enter. So that's basically it. Okay, boom. And that is how you disable or deactivate a MFA device for an IAM user. Okay, now that the MFA device has been disabled or, or deactivated, let's try to log back into uh, AWS console using Jarvis's account. Okay. Click on sign in and there you go. No more MFA. So I've simply logged in without having to um, key in the MFA code. So this is how you disable or deactivate a M MFA device for an IAM user and it can be done using a single command line. I want a question on security though. Um, obviously I was able to do this because I have access to SS key and you know uh, secret SS key associated with a privileged powerful user. That is why I was able to execute this command in the in the first place. So when handling AWS SS keys, you know, especially those with broad permissions, you know, uh, we have to consider um, following least privileged principle. But first of all, consider using roles instead of SS keys. But in the event you need to create SS keys for users like developers or DevOps engineers for their works on their laptops, for example. You should follow the principle of least privilege by granting users only the permissions they need to perform the tasks. So this reduces the potential impact of a compromised access key. So secondly, in terms of, of you know how you store those access keys, um, you know you shouldn't be embedding access keys within your source code or you know 
uploading them on uh, GitHub, you know, so on and so forth. And I would always encourage uh, using a secret management tools or an encrypted vault, okay, which will basically uh, maximize the protection and you know security for the SS keys. And you should rotate your SS keys regularly. You shouldn't um, have SS keys that have been around for you know a year, two years. You know that shouldn't be happening. Okay, and you should always monitor and audit SS keys. Okay, and their usage, right? So, um, you should monitor and user activity, and basically, you know, you should revoke SS keys or remove them if they're no longer used. So basically, the SS key that haven't been used in a long time should be removed. And also, you know, in terms of security, you should consider. Uh, looking into shadow data risks. So you know, every time SS keys are copied, you know, shared across, you know, teams, you know, store without due care or due security measures, they can fall into the wrong hands, you know, or become shadow data. So whether it is done inadvertently or intentionally, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, the shadow data will always pose a risk. Okay, so um, with this, I'd like to conclude my demo. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, have a great day ahead.